Can we talk about girls on social media? I don't know how to navigate social media. So I was watching this documentary on Netflix. I'm not too sure if you guys have watched it called Can I Tell You a Secret? And I have to recommend it to everybody out there, especially those of you who are women in my fan base, all my women viewers, all my women listeners, all my women kind of fans, whatever you are in between, you have to watch this documentary called Can I Tell You a Secret on Netflix. It's basically about this guy from the UK, unfortunately, who was the first guy to be convicted for cyber stalking online. And he essentially, I think he went in for like seven years. I've got his fucking name. But essentially, he was living in this small town somewhere in England. And he basically ended up terrorizing all these girls that he went to school with. Um, obviously, they didn't know at the time that he was an old school friend because he did it much later on in their lives. But he absolutely terrorized them online, especially on Facebook. He terrorized these people. And this was early on the times of social media <clears throat> when a lot of us were quite naive, when a lot of us, we used to put our entire lives on there. Because I know for myself, I can speak from my own account, you know, and again, it's probably, you know, it doesn't really matter with God, me being a guy. I'm probably not going to put my life in danger. But I honestly, 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 honestly think in my in, in my case, I was very much naive to social. No, I wasn't naive. I went to social media head first. I would post literally everything I did by the minute to the minute. Um, it was basically a play by play of what I was doing on any given day. And obviously over time, I kind of got bored of doing that. And now I basically got out of my way, never to give an indication of where I'm at, what I'm doing in that particular moment. Sometimes I'll go to the gym like, hours before then post a clip at that time to make it look like i went then just to kind of mess up my fucking timeline so it's all kind of different but back then everybody did that and i guess because everybody kind of did a play-by-play 24-hour -play coverage of their lives he took advantage of it and he was able to get inside these people's lives especially these young girls and what he did that was really kind of mean and really cruel is that sometimes he would play into the inner politics the inner beef whatever that was going on within that crew already that he might have already have known about or heard about from back in the day because it was a small town or something he just kind of surmised from keeping an eye on people who like certain things people who comment on certain things so he'd go on this one particular girl's post i think it's this one in particular and he basically started messaging one of her friends but posing as her boyfriend right and then that girl would then be a little bit uncomfortable with her friend boyfriend texting her that way then the boyfriend would be like it's not really me but then in the process of them talking she might have said some stuff disparagingly about her friend that then would make their relationship a bit weird to the point where i think this particular girl on the cover of the um, documentary um her boyfriend actually ended up breaking up with her because of all the drama that was going on with this with this guy stalking and pretending to be him pretending to be some of her friends and the really crazy thing again don't judge me for this one of the things that really kind of boggled my mind when they went to go um, arrest him at his house, according to the reconstruction of, of the arrest on the documentary, because um, obviously we don't see actual real footage of it. When they went to go seize his electronics, you know what he had? He had some like shitty tablet, not like an iPad, whatever brand, like an Alcatel, or whatever, and some Android phone. He was terrorizing hundreds, no, let's say thousands of girls online with all these different aliases and identities, all with just one tablet and one Android phone. I was honestly legitimately blown away by that. I thought they would go in and see like a goon room, see like seven monitors on the wall, maybe see a post-it board with like string tying things together. He was able to keep up all those passwords, all those um, IDs, all those... Um, conversation threads all of it in his head and then one tablet and a fucking smartphone crazy 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 shit but in the end you know how they found out um, about him and they kind of was able to kind of rumble him and get him he fucked up one day and he logged on to one of the accounts that he had a fake account um and he went on he went live on instagram quickly like by accident but then somebody was online when he did that saw it and saw him on the camera he tried to quickly cover his camera but it was too late and they instantly recognized him as oh that's that boy from school the weirdo kid that no one spoke to because i think he had some he had autism and shit he was a little bit socially awkward and whatever, whatever and a bit of a um, an outcast so i was able to kind of find out it was him and obviously through some other investigation other bits of you know um whatever came through they was eventually able to arrest him but if he didn't make that mistake of going live on Instagram, there's a possibility he might have never been found because of how intricate um, he was kind of weaving all these fucking crazy webs. 
part of me when I was watching the documentary, I was also kind of a little bit like judging the girls. I was almost like, how do these girls be so stupid? How can they be so naive to put so much of their information up there to be so? Because I think a lot of them also they had this thing. I think that's the title of the of the documentary. Can I tell you a secret? That's how he starts these conversations. He'll be like, "Hey, chick," he'll pretend to be like a girl and use like you know fucking girl vernacular like Han, babe all this sort of stuff like certain exes and then he'll say can i tell you a secret and then that secret will usually be some nonsense to kind of get into their heads about their boyfriends about their sisters whatever it may be and one of the things i was watching and i was watching this documentary i was sitting there thinking these girls are super dumb like why are they why are they entertaining this guy's conversation they have no idea who this person is they're pretending to be somebody else no sorry they have no idea this person who they're talking to is who they're talking to but it's just entertaining the conversation because it looks like, because I guess when he would text these girls, he'd create a fake profile and make it look like a, you know, a normal girl, like some regular girl from like a nearby town that had her own life with a pop in his, like it, she, he'd, he'd kind of build up a really kind of almost looking legit profile with actual legit looking pictures, legit looking comments. Like he did the graft, but still the girls would entertain these random cold dms from him posing as these girls and i thought it was really dumb and naive and i almost judged the girls for it then as i then as the documentary went on i began to feel bad for them because like you know what it's not fair that they should have to change the way they act on social media that they should have to kind of curtail or pull back how much they share because there's guys that this exist you should be free to post everything that you do from the time that you piss shit have breakfast, talk to your partner, hang out with your kids. You can just do whatever you want. Display your entire fucking life on social media if you so please. That doesn't mean because you do that, people should then be allowed to take that information and, you know, do wrong by you or do bad by you or do evil shit to you or fuck up your life or fucking relationship. That isn't not fair. That's obviously um, not cool, as Tom Segura would say. And that is the reason why he was able to go down for so many years. Um, but at the end, when I did finish it, I really did feel bad for every single woman involved because you could tell their relationship with social media, their just, you know, them as a person had become completely changed from that day onwards. They were never the same. Even though the guy got convicted and the problem has kind of technically gone away, you can tell that these women have all been fundamentally changed ever since then. I think one lady in the documentary, actually, this lady on the poster, her boyfriend broke up with her. Another one, if I'm not mistaken, her wedding got cancelled because of all the drama that guy was causing. Like He caused some actual legitimate havoc in these people's actual real lives. So I really recommend you check it out. It's called Can I Tell You a Secret? Um, it's about this guy who basically um, was able to clone crazy amounts of fucking accounts. I'm actually going to read the synopsis for you here so you can see what I'm talking about because I think I'm not really um, getting it the right way here. So let me read you to the fucking synopsis here. The synopsis says... Yeah, so let me, I'll actually read the, the fucking review on Guardian so you can see what it actually says. The review on The Guardian as, is as follows... Um, there needs to sorry there needs to be let me read the article in the guardian there needs to be i've decided a subdivision of categories within the uh, proliferation of offerings under the genre true crime documentary foremost among them needs to be one called what happens when only women are in danger this admittedly would cover a large portion of genre but then i would like some action on the issue of social cultural legal police dismissal of and contempt of women's vulnerabilities into this category would fall can i tell you a secret the latest true crime offering from the leader of the pack, Netflix, and the first it has made with Louis Farouk's Mindhouse production company and association with The Guardian. In the story of the cyber stalker Matthew Hardy, that's the guy that got um, that was stalking everybody, who terrorized multiple women over many years. The case was the first covered in depth in G2 by Siren Kale, then via a six-part Guardian podcast series in 2002, the year Hardy received the longest sentence handed down on the UK for stalking, which is nine years. He got nine years nine fucking years for that the two-part documentary concentrates on three of the many women who hardy targeted abby zoe and leah who's hunt 700 pages of meticulous records of the poisonous um, communications with her and her family and colleagues would eventually help enable charges against them were all attractive happy confident young women with strong online presences that's exactly that's a really good point that's the thing that's really heartbreaking at the end of it 
that's the really heartbreaking thing at the end of it they were all attractive happy confident young women with strong online presences and by the end they were all fucking they all kind of wilted they all kind of even when they're sitting talking they're all kind of within their own shell they're like a shadow of their former selves you would imagine um it's really kind of sad to see how much havoc he was able to cause just from not even being in there not even being close to them physically or not even touching them physically just from all from online shit and social media it's fucking wild it continues when they started receiving messages from a confiding stranger apparently female whose gambit was often the line that gives the series a title generally within the few exchanges abby et al would grow suspicious investigate the profile of the messenger and withdraw from a communication this is when the harassment will begin using fake profiles posing as a woman to send sexual content to the fathers of the friends yeah that was a really heartbreaking one one of the girls um this guy ended up sending yeah one of the one of the girls crazy right one of the girls was doing only fans on the side or something but she wasn't sure that she was going to do it she took the pictures but she wasn't sure if she was going to open an only fans account somehow this fucking guy got a hold of those pictures that weren't online yet by contacting the photographer posing as her like he did some crazy thing he gets a hold of these pictures then he gets those pictures and then starts to flirt with one of her friend's dads and in that flirting conversation, he sends the pictures of that girl's OnlyFans to him as like, hey, let's exchange nudes. Can you imagine how embarrassing that must have been for the dad thinking he's talking to one of his daughter's friends <laughs> when actually he's talking to this guy? <laughs> Honestly, it's, I, I shouldn't laugh, but that bit was, it blew my mind. That guy is a fucking sicko. He's a fucking sicko. Anyway, continues. Um, apparently, female whose gambit was often the line that gives a series a title. Generally, within a few messages, Abby et al. would grow suspicious, investigate the profile of the messengers, and withdraw from communication. This is when the harassment would begin, using fake profiles, posing as women who sent actual sexual content um, to fathers of their friends, for example, or posing as people the women had met on a holiday in order to message their boyfriends, start rumors, and sow division. Meanwhile, the direct contact between Hardy and his targets became increasingly vicious and threatening. This girl obviously is the real fucking MVP of the series. Um, this young lady called uh, Leah. She's the one who was able, I think her wedding got ruined off the back of him fucking doing this nonsense. So she took it all in her own hands and decided to collate all this evidence because the police also at the time weren't taking it seriously. And because she works as like a paralegal or something, she has an incredibly um, organized administrative brain. So she legitimately put together a dossier, like a, a massive file that was color coded, dated, chronological, all like fucking crazy that she gave to the police. And that legitimately was one of the bases that framed the whole entire case without that document maybe the case wouldn't have been able to be prosecuted so she played a vital role because she was able to collect all that information screenshots and stuff that she was printing off at work and putting into this massive fucking 700 page fucking folder so big up her but i really recommend you check it out it's a fucking crazy crazy documentary the title is can i tell you a secret it's available on netflix and i think if you watch it especially as a cisgendered male like myself you definitely will feel a lot more sympathy for um our fellow women and sisters out there who have to navigate social media with the threat of or with the you know lingering feeling that you never know who you're talking to online could be some weirdo who's trying to sow division between you and your friends or try and make your life a fucking living hell absolutely horrific but really recommend you check it out definitely a good insight to keep an eye out on what to look for when people are trying to creep on you and ask you weird questions in your dms really good series it's called sorry documentary called can I tell your secret available on netflix now check it out check it out <laughs>